Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, we're going to be going over warping. We're going to be going over warping in very simple terms and in a simple way. We're going to be uh, using a extreme example, but uh, it's an easy one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record in uh, any like a like finger drumming, and then I'm going to warp it. Uh, it's not going to be synced to the BPM. I'm going to try to just, I'm going to play it. I'm going to forget what the BPM is. Okay, there's one. So that is the extent of my musical ability. Um, so I have something on the offbeat now. Okay, now we have a hi-hat. So we have uh, our two sounds here, uh, and they're obviously not synced up uh, in terms of the BPM of the track. Uh, and it sounds pretty bad. So what we'll do is um, we'll select the portion we want to warp, which would be this portion right here. The best way uh, for your beginning and your uh, warping uh, you know, uh, percussive material, as in like kick, anything with a kick or something you know the BPM of. If you're a DJ, this helps. You right click on this area, you select quarter. So these lines show up on the quarter note. Now you're going to use this as a reference, all right? And then you select down here into your clip and you go to where the beat kind of begins move it to the beginning, right click the arrow, set 1-1 one, one here, okay? So now you have that. So then it's just a matter of uh, double clicking the beginning of the next beat to make a yellow marker and then moving it over and look up here and then see how that's gray and then white. That'll tell you 1-2, okay? Boom, right? And then you do the same here, right? It's about right. And then you double click, yeah. So the warp markers uh, kind of show you where you warp, but you can warp uh, on any area, which is weird. Uh, it's not what I'm used to since I've been using Ableton 5. Anyway, so you double click, move it over, right? And you just uh, you do that, and this is basic warping right and obviously that's a lower BPM so I'll lower it and we're almost done right you can see up here it matches right you understand so looks fantastic we'll give that a play So that's warped. That is uh, a warped kind of thing. So now we will select, uh, we'll just select that part. I want to add in this hi-hat, but the hi-hat pattern does not start on the, the kick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a little trick. Select the beginning. There's an attack on this, which is fine. Set one one here, right? I'm going to warp it just like I did the kick. And bear with me while I drill this into your head. Double click. Uh, Able to 9, if you're using Able to 9, it has a lovely kind of, you know, uh, grayscale difference, which lets you know whoever, whoever put that in deserves a raise. This is a little too early. Move it back. And warping is just uh, Ableton warping is probably the best warping. <laughs> so now, okay, we have this here now, and what we'll do now is we'll right click on the eighth. So now, when then we move it over, it snaps. We're now on the offbeat. So now, 
right? So now we have that, which is really cool. Uh, so what warping does is there's two ways to warp. You can warp like a conventional. Here I'll show you. You can you can warp like a a, a conventional. Um, Uh, CD like a vinyl record you select um, what kind of transposing you want and you hit repitch and that repitches everything so what you can do is you can turn warp off and then transpose this right so we'll undo that so that's automatically warp. Ableton warps things pretty well automatically. So you have that. And that's fine uh, if you wanted to slow down the BPM. It works too. Right? But if you want to keep... If you want to keep the pitch like the same key, the same pitch, you'd use one of these options. Now there's different options for different things. So you can have it on beats to preserve the transients, which is the beginning part. So every beginning part, that's when it kind of re-triggers the warping, which is weird. Right, so it, it's focused on transients. You can focus on 16ths too. Because each 16th, there's a, a, a new sound that's introduced. This is getting kind of advanced and it's a little hard to explain uh, I should also point out that you can pitch this up to an extreme value or by uh, semitones or by very fine amounts um, so that's the beats and beats uh, it what it'll do is you'll hear it I'm gonna try to explain this so right now we have uh, We'll have a 32, and we'll have it repeating, so you can hear it now. So it's preserving the pitch, not slowing it down, like a, like a record. So it's repeating a part over and over. Uh, it's repeating a part synced, uh, synced to um, a 30 second of a bar, right? So and it's only repeating once, but if we want to repeat it over and over again, that's another way uh, you can kind of preserve it. Sounds weird. Right? And that's at uh, 32, because 16th sounds completely different too. We have it pitched down very, very low, so you can really hear it. Right? And at eighths. Right, so depending on your audio, if it's an if it's a piece of audio like this, like okay, uh, it's very you know syncopated. It's not a vocal like my voice. Doing this to my voice would sound kind of weird. What you can do is within reason, uh, set it sixteenths and repeats the note once. Right, that sounds more natural because it's preserving each part. If that makes any sense. If you want to preserve the transients, uh, Ableton will automatically detect. It'll ignore, you know, all this fun stuff. It's right down the bottom there, if you can see it. Hope you can. It'll preserve the transients. Here, I'll move that down. Oops. There, transients. Sorry. We have our transients uh, here. And what that does is that uh, it starts the sound. Uh, when you get from a quiet sound to a loud sound, and it'll vary between any of these and more. So that's beats in a way. Uh, you'd want it to go repeat back and forth, which is a technique um, when you're microsampling. It'll sound more natural. It won't sound like repeat, repeat, repeat. It'll repeat and then go back and then go back. And you can get... You'd have to go really down, really, really low to hear the difference. For percussive material with a lot of transients. Uh, tones sounds weird. Uh, I'd use that for like a bass maybe. 
uses like a grain size right and uh, that preserves uh, the high end more as opposed to complex which basically takes the high end out right and a texture uh, is more for uh, say a vocal or uh, very like like changed uh, like a sample material that's uh, more pitched up or pitched down than it should be in a way and it's all about finding where the best the best balance is right and you get some really cool effects with that so right now that's a that's you keep that in your head and uh, play around with it you'll slowly begin to understand what it does um, I don't even know what it does so with that being said uh, this was recorded at a different BPM than uh, the project so if we repitch it we get some weird stuff going on right it, you can hear it's kind of speeding up because these are, are different kind of uh, distances between each other and right the the original uh, pitch of the kick um, is at 98 right so like we're pitching it up you know several percent so what we can do understanding how the transposition works uh, we'll, so we'll go beats we'll have a repeat once because in this the sound every quarter note every every quarter bar uh, we have a new sound so right now it's preserving the transients and there's you know it could be triggered twice which makes it sound unnatural so what we'll do we'll do a comparison comparison we'll transpose it up not too bad so what we'll do is we'll go quarter and repeat once so now you can really hear it when we uh, pitch it up that makes any sense it keeps it more natural instead of because it's, it's it's repeating over and over again as opposed to the transients as opposed to a quarter so the quarter will preserve this part and just uh, uh, repitch uh, all of these starting from this point and ending at this point if that makes any sense I know that's pretty heavy uh, but that's how you would warp um, uh, da, 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 da. complex and complex pro um, it sounds okay uh, if you have uh, a lot of you know material that's uh, like a full track uh, in a DJ set or whatever it's best if you're not um, going crazy with the BPM um, uh, in the warping, I would go beats and transients because it does a good job uh, and it's easy on the CPU. Uh, Complex and Complex Pro, um, I believe uh, it's licensed from another company to Ableton. So, and it, it it sounds odd sometimes. It sounds good on on vocals only for me. Uh, Repitch if that's what you're into, uh, and uh, texture and tones uh, for leads. So. What I'll do is, you know, and there's, there's there's fun ways you can use warping as an effect, and you know, if you're using Ableton, uh, warping is probably your best friend. So we have that. So what I want to do is you can select, you know, grain size, and you can pitch it down to an extreme fashion. Right? Not so much, I guess. Right, you can take that, pitch it down. That's set 17. Consolidate. Yes, I know. And you can use like pitching as an effect, and it's really interesting to kind of use it that way. Right? And you can just do weird stuff. And then you say, okay, well, cool. I found like a new kind of stab. Uh, and you could uh, 
use that as a clap that sounds more interesting or or an offbeat kind of bass thing we'll have that you know you know as an example uh, so that's uh, warping and warping is really powerful what else am I not going over yeah um, that's basically it uh, don't worry about slave uh, yeah and just experiment with uh, the beats in particular you can get some nice effects depending on your loop say compl remember complicated kind of percussive loop 16s uh, if it's like techno ask uh, like you know like that and you know and if you can repitch repitch uh, and that'll uh, make sure you have the highest quality and if it's like a, li a little bit low that's fine uh, but if you must uh, the transients is really good but 16th is really good too if you want to kind of um, pitch up each kind of sound it's really fun and uh, for kicks always uh, quarter so hopefully I explain that really well and you understand it um, takes a while warping is like the most confusing thing for people but it's actually pretty easy once you get once you get down to it anyway that's it for today take care